another episode of Charlie Drives. Uh, today, you join me on the fourth video. And finally, the deal I had with my wife here is that if I washed her car, she'd let me drive it. <laughs> so this one is to finally sort of discuss a little bit more in depth about the kind of driving characteristics of the new Land Rover Defender. Uh, just a reminder, this is the Defender HSE 110. Um, if you haven't seen the previous videos, click on uh, the link up there. Oh, the let's just videos. walk in the middle of the road. No problem, mate. Oh, I won't run you over. Bloody hell. Right, click the link upstairs. Upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Click the link above and I will include the collection video. Uh, I'll, I'll include a link to the collection video of this car and then you can watch the whole series. Anyway, yeah, so this particular video is to discuss the sort of driving characteristics of this car. Um, ooh, hell, dude. Let's not go that way. So Wrong side of the road. Of the road. Sunday today, so, you know, got to watch out. There's liabilities all over the place. Um, that's not just us. Not just us. It's a nice car. Volvo XC90, new one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, what is this this car like to drive? We've had it for two weeks, three weeks? Oh, three weeks, it's coming up to four weeks. Actually. Coming up to four weeks, okay. Four so, weeks we've, on Tuesday. so we've had the car for a while. Because of coronavirus, we haven't really been going anywhere at all really, to be honest. So it's, a, it's been a little bit challenging to get a real idea of you know what it's like to drive on a long journey. Um, we will be actually going on a long trip to Spain at the end of at July. At the end of July, it's like we don't want to fly anywhere. Don't, well, yeah, we decided not to fly anywhere. So we're going to do a long journey driving to Spain in this. To uh, see family. To see the family. And it's gonna be it's gonna be great. We'll film the whole thing. It might probably be, you know, two or three videos. We're not filming the whole thing. It'll be a bit boring if we film the whole thing, but we'll film the fun parts anyway. The family fights we'll film. Yeah, they, those are the fun parts. Oh my god, so many bad drivers around, isn't there? Yeah. Well, oh. you just gotta be careful. We're on country roads. There's lots of people walking and riding their bikes, and there's lots of cars one pulling out and not looking. Oh my goodness. Right. Um, yeah, so so as you might have seen in the sort of exterior walk around, absolutely great looking car. It is fantastic. Don't step out into the road. It's gonna make a fun video, actually, isn't it? <laughs> so the first thing that you notice about the car, and it's not really anything to do with its driving characteristics at all, but just generally when you drive around, a lot of people look at it. It is it's obviously hot stuff right now. A lot. It's a it's a new car. Um, the design is fantastic, as, as I think we covered off in the in the uh, second video of the sort of walk around of the car, which you can watch up there. Um, but yeah, generally a lot of people look at the car, a lot of people ask about it as well. As we know, the new Defender, there's a big massive split of opinions between diehard Defender enthusiasts. Yeah. Which is and, good, because there's a lot of people who love the originality of, of it. Um, and, 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 and I do agree with a lot of people in the sense that that car, it's built for, I think it's built for different things. This has got good off-road capabilities, but the reality of most of the owners for this particular car, they're probably not gonna be taking it off-road too regularly. What I feel this car gives is a really good blend of the old and the new. This gives you that workhorse capability, but with a little bit more, well actually it's a lot more comfort yeah, inside. it's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more practical. Yeah. Well, it's a lot more practical than the original Defender from a driving, from an everyday driving standpoint. Yeah. Uh, and we know this because we, there was a possibility we were going to have an interim car between your Discovery Sport and yeah. this one, and we were going to go for a, uh, a classic Defender that they had. There was about forty it grand for it. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. And driving it around, whilst it was a spectacle to drive. Don't get me wrong, you felt like you were king of the road driving a tank. At the same time, it was hard to drive. It wasn't easy. Turning circles, dire. Great off-road car, no problem at all. 
but it's not the type of car that's suitable for the kind of day-to-day -day things that we probably need it for. Right. Um, but anyway, that, that, that being said, this doesn't have any, it, this does not share any of those driving characteristics when you're on the road with that old classic Defender. It is, it's worlds apart, isn't it? Yeah. I think, I think some of the, some of the other things uh, that you really note is that whilst you, I'm sitting here, feel really high up, feel like I'm in a very commanding position. Um, you feel like the boss. You? you feel like the boss. You feel like the boss of the road. It is, it is it's great. Nobody's going to screw with you, um, which is which is really nice. But whilst you are driving, obviously a big car, when you're sort of navigating around, maybe sort of car parks or you know maybe slightly smaller roads. You don't get a horrendous feeling of all oh, this car so big. I'm gonna struggle to like get this round the corner and all sorts of other things that you might have done in the in in, in the old Defender. So you really really can just thank you, please. You really you really can just drive it anywhere, can't you? You don't really have to worry about anything, to be honest. So you're right. You don't, and I think. Part of the reason you don't have to worry about it is, you know, all the cameras that you've got, all the sensors, it really does help you maneuver it. It is a much bigger car than my old one. So when I first got in it, I was a little bit nervous about parking in tight spaces and stuff, reversing into things, but it really helps. The cameras, yeah. Yeah, all the camera angles, um, and just shows you everything to look out for. Yeah. Because the last thing I want to do is prank this one, huh? Yeah, you don't want to prank this. And and, and I think, you know, the, the cameras definitely do, they make that difference, don't they? They, they, really they, do. they give you that added bit of confidence um, about, you know, where certain things are on the road. The other the other lovely thing about this car is, um, is its visibility. The visibility is great. There's not a massive blind spot here. Um, so that's pretty good. And also in the back, you can pretty much see everywhere around you um, and you've also got these humongous wing mirrors which really do make a difference when you're when you're the nice when you're thing about the wing mirrors too is when you're on a busy road and you know like ours you try to pull out it does warn you that there's traffic coming behind there's obstacles coming yeah. up beside you so again it's just another little feature that you really can't screw up with yeah. this car and that's also tied into the uh, the doors. They've also got an indicator to let you know if something's coming, uh, and that applies to the rear doors as well. So that's also quite a nice feature. Yeah. But um, more about sort of just driving it. The steering is incredibly responsive. You don't have like a massive dead 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 zone, which is kind of sometimes what you do experience a little bit in in sort of uh, more sort of off road off road type of vehicles it's great for driving around on b roads it's not not a tricky car to drive at all um this car the d240 so it's the two liter turbocharged diesel engine a lot of people are going oh why have you chosen the diesel over the petrol um, firstly the only petrol engine that was available to us at the time was the 300 and if you look at the specs um it's, it's definitely not as fuel efficient another problem especially for us was that we didn't have an opportunity to try different different engines, different specs or anything like that. We were kind of buying blind. So you didn't really know um, how it was going to perform. All you could really do was look at the look at the specs on paper. I'll demonstrate this to you in a second when we when we get onto a bit more of an open road. But the actual pull and the torque in this in this car is really, really quite good. Um, as well as the throttle response. Um, if you don't have it in eco mode your throttle response will be good. If you put it into eco mode, that's when you'll get relatively significant uh, throttle response delays. Let me overtake this car. So yeah, just putting my foot down. It's got a bit, of, it's got a bit of pull. Got a good bit of pull. Um, it doesn't sound bad either, does it? No, it's got a good sound. Too. It's got a pretty good sound, yeah. It's a really awesome car. It's really awesome. I just love it's it. Awesome. It's just so awesome. It's so awesome. When we drove, when we test drove the other yeah. Um, Defender. Yeah. We, we actually took road. it down this road, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. We were doing that. 
and I was driving that, I just felt like it, it did shake a little bit more. And it's great, it was full of character, it was a lovely car. Like I said, you, kind of, you did feel like king of the road in that one. But I felt it had a lot more sway on top of it. It wasn't the, the safest feeling to drive fast on the road and not that you condone driving fast anywhere, but when you put your foot down and even at like 70 miles an hour in that one, yeah, it did feel a bit unstable. Yeah, this is, this, I think this is much more well rounded. So, even on this road, I mean, we're just doing 60 miles an hour right now, and it feels fine, you know. Okay, we're not on a motorway yet, but trust me, when we go on a motorway later, you'll, you'll see how, how easy right. they are to drive. But just to talk about a little bit more about the fuel economy of this car, so as mentioned, uh, this is the D240, we chose it because of you know, for, for fuel efficiency reasons, I suppose. Um, but um, at the moment, uh, we've done 260 miles um, and we've got 273 miles left in the tank and we are pretty much sitting at half half a tank of diesel at the moment. The tank is 85 lit litres isn't it? So it's 85 litres to fill up um, so it gives you an idea of uh, the sort of distance that you can get out of it but at the moment most of our journeys um, have been around the sort of 25 miles per gallon um, mark, we haven't quite sort of got to the 40 mile per gallon mark at the moment, so we're kind of, um, but then again, like we've just been doing really, really short journeys, quick, quick trips to Tesco's and things like that. So, um, but yeah, you get a nice little chart on the display telling you about which journey uh, was your best journey in terms of fuel efficiency. So it's quite a quite a useful useful uh, tool to have um, but as we mentioned we're going on a long trip um, at the end of July so it'll be worth seeing what this is like on a on a, on a, on a longer run, longer run uh, on motorways and things like that just to see how much it costs to take this on a long journey another nice driving characteristic of this car is the is its ability to stop and the brakes are incredible for something that's I think it's like two and a half tons um, it's really really quite incredible to to break were you pretending to break I no like, I was actually seeing it there <laughs> there's nothing behind us we haven't brake tested anymore yeah. but no it's it's it, it's good it it it, it really does um, it does break well you feel like you are you're driving something incredibly safe um, I think the old definitely that old defender did not break as well as this did it just just generally living with this car and driving around with it it's not it's not noisy the sound deadening is it is well it's obviously well insulated um you know when you put your when you put your foot down you hear you hear the engine it work it works it works generally quite well let's do a standing start here launch control put it in sport then sport right let's see what how fast this is ready Won't be our, it won't be one of our best MPG trips, but you know, it's just good to just let you guys know what it's like to drive on a sort of regular basis. What is it like to live with it? And we'll cover we'll cover cover off more about that in future videos for sure. So this car this car comes with the um, the clear sight mirror standard. I think that's part of the HSE range, um, and it's it, it's good. It, I, I think in for motorway use, it's great. Um, I, I don't think you would use it for for, for, for much else. And you're gonna go. Um, when you don't have the clear sight on, um, you, you your vision is is fairly obstructed by the wheel and the centre headrest. Um, but when you pop the clear sight on, you just get an immediate view of the road um, behind you, which is which is really good. You can't see directly what's behind you, but you can see sort of straight back. Um, the one thing I would say that is a little bit disconcerting when you look at the clear sight, and I don't know if you've noticed this yet, is if you've got quite bright light behind you, when you look initially at the clear sight, you have to kind of focus a little bit on what you're looking at. You get pretty bad reflections from the rear window in it. But apart from that, it's a really, really nice feature to have on the car. Oh, I'm 
option. It's an option on all of, all of the others, and it's a standalone option as yeah. well. Now we're hitting dual carriageway, so you get to open up the car a little bit more just to give you guys a bit of a feel for what this is like at speed. Not speeding, obviously. But no, but it is, I mean, so stable. Yeah, motorway driving. Super easy, it's a joy to drive on the motorways. This will be an absolute dog to drive on a long journey for sure. Quite the chimney, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely not like the chimney. As soon as you got up to like 65 <laughs> miles an hour in that, the biggest problem with it was it only had five gears. So it was like the top of its rev range on a motorway, the sound deadening was non-existent and it just sounded ridiculous. Whereas this is just, so nice to drive, so easy, and it's just pleasant, really pleasant. How many gears does this one have? Eight. Eight, Eight gears. But yeah, if you're thinking about buying one of these uh, new Defenders, definitely get your name on the list for sure. Uh, I wouldn't discount the diesel engines, um, especially the D240. I can't really say anything about the uh, the, the D200, because um, hey, we've never driven them, so we can't really compare. But um, I can definitely vouch for this. It's got the ad blue as well, as you rightly reminded me earlier. So that gives you uh, that gives you the ability to um, drive through lower. I don't even know what the ad blue is. Do you know what it is? In about it. Why don't you Google it? Diesel exhaust fluid is a liquid used to reduce the amount of air pollution created by a diesel engine. Specifically, DEF is a defender. It's not about to you tool back. I don't know. This I drive Lotuses. It's exhaust fluid. Exhaust fluid. Yeah. It makes your car more efficient and you can drive through low emission zones. So you can drive through central That's London without getting a... Without getting a ticket. That's all you need to know. I don't know that because I drive ridiculous cars that don't require any such... Such wizardry or trickery. But anyway, well, I'll tell you what. We will include a video for those who probably are like us and do not know what AdBlue is, thanks for that, backseat driver, get in the back. We will include... Get out of my car. Get in the back. <laughs> we will We will include a video about AdBlue later. Shall I park? Go ahead. Since it's super tight, we are at a car park in a petrol station. Let's see what happens when we park up. There's a little one there. Hey? Yeah, yeah you want to you want to have a fight with a, con a shipping container? Not really. How, are we good down that side? Well, you can see with all the uh, cameras. I don't think so. Run in like I was gonna. All we want is to stop in and get a drink. Um, oh, phew! I fell off my car. Okay, how much space you got? Get out. There we go. Yeah, so anyway, a little bit of a tight spot, but you know, it is a, it's a big car. So that, that is that. You'd have, a, you'd have a massive problem. If you, getting into that space in one of the old Defenders would have been really difficult. And, and mainly because of the fact that you just don't have the cameras and you also don't have the turning circle like you do in this car, so. Uh, definitely, yeah, they've, done, they've definitely done a good job with that. What have you bought me? Coke. Coca-Cola. Crunchy. And a Crunchy. All right, Douglas. I'm jealous, mate. Pretty nut. <laughs> anyway, can we can we put these in the fridge, get them cold? There we go. Right, does it fit in the fridge? I don't know. Do don't... these big bottles, do you think it will close with these big bottles in it? Well, do it carefully, just in case. Nice, 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 nice. Be excellent for excellent. a road trip. That's cool. It's gonna be great on a it's gonna be great on a road trip, for sure. Now we'll get them nice and chilled. Yeah. Anyway, um, hope you've enjoyed the Land Rover Defender video so far. Um, let us know in the comments any 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 further things you'd like us to cover on the on the car. As I mentioned, we are going on a long journey, so watch the space for that. Uh, there will be a few other videos coming up on this car. Um, in the interim and uh, yeah please get subscribed um, give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you for the next video take care bye